Welcome to the Nitpicky Nerds. Today, a deck tech on BZ's personal deck. Today, we're going to be focused on enchanting a single creature that has Shroud. Mm. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicky Nerds. If you like these crazy, wacky personal deck techs, Check out the whole playlist we got going on. Come talk to us in the Discord. We're in there all the time. Discord. Uh, we actually been playing some games. Ooh, webcam EDH with us if you want to try. That's where you. That's where we could happen. That's where it happens. That'll be our tidbit later. That'll be our tidbit later. Sure. Uh, so, what is this deck? Who's the commander and who's the secret commander? Right. So this this deck is all about enchanting creatures with shroud. We posted our pet cards video a while ago, and we got a lot of comments. We're like, you can't do that. So let me explain. The creature that we want to enchant is Imperial Archangel. It is four green, white, white, blue for a 5-8 flyer with Shroud. Shroud says it can't be the target of spells or abilities that anyone controls. And the creature says all damage that will be dealt to you is dealt to Imperial Archangel instead. This card is not anything special. This is my favorite card in all of Magic. It is my ultimate pet card. Nostalgia, first ever, mythic opening, etc. And I wanted to build a whole deck around it because 12-year-old BZ was very sad that he could not enchant this thing. Yes, and we're gonna show you how to enchant it in a second, but the real commander, the one that is sitting in the command zone because we, they won't let us put Imperial Archangel in the command zone is Tuvasa, the Sunlit. A band for a legendary Merfolk Shaman 1-1. One, one. It gets plus one, plus one for each enchantment you control. Whenever you cast your first enchantment each turn, draw a card. So it's an enchantress in the command zone, and this is an enchantress deck where we're focusing on auras, and basically, there's like 36 enchantments in this deck. Yes. And let's just hop into it. First category, we're cheating Shroud. And what we're talking about is this is ways to actually get those uh, auras on to Imperial Archangel. And now you're thinking, I know all the tricks. No, you don't. You know any of the tricks. You Comment below if you knew all the tricks. Comment below if you didn't know all the tricks. Gotcha either way. First way is clones. If a aura is on the battlefield, let's say I have a 1-1 one, one creature with an aura on it, and I have Imperial Archangel on the battlefield. I can play one of the three following auras that we're about to mention, or clones, sorry. They enter aura's target when they cast. So I'm not casting an aura, I'm casting a creature or an enchantment. It's already on the battlefield, but it's going to enter as an aura, which means auras enter attached, just straight up. Yes, uh, there is never a point when the aura is on the battlefield, but not attached to a creature. Yes. And therefore you're skipping the targeting and going straight to the putting it on. Right, so we have Estrid's Invocation, which is two and a blue for an, uh, an enchantment, enters the battlefield as an enchantment you control, and at your upkeep you can flicker it. So early, you can play this as, a, um, there's some nuts and bolts auras like um, Utopia Sprawl. Just play it as one of those and ramp or a Rhystic Study. And then later, oh, now it's an aura when I need it the most. Yep. Next is Mermaid, one blue, blue, and it enters as an artifact or enchantment you control. Simple. Actually, any anything. So even something you don't control. Oh, okay. I see. I was thinking it was just that you control. Oh, well, it, it's not. It's better than I thought. Yes. And Clever Impersonator, which is a creature that can become, obviously, he's the cleverest boy ever. He can become an aura. Uh, I mean, what's the weirdest one? Quick, give me an aura that's really stupid. Eldrazi Conscription. How, how about Unflinching Courage? That's even... He could become he, courage. He becomes Unflinching Courage. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. So that's, that's one way. Now, auras also do not target since... If they're entering, they enter attached. And if you're not casting them, you're not targeting. So if you bring them back from the graveyard to the battlefield, they just go on to a creature. Same thing. Yep. Exact same thing as before where the target isn't happening and there's never a point where auras are on the battlefield and not attached to creatures. Right. You're not casting it. There's no need to target anything. So we have Reach Heather, three and a white sorcery. Return all auras from your graveyard to the battlefield. Only creatures can be enchanted this way. So you can't return like Utopia Sprawl. Yeah. Uh, next, uh, replenish. This one's even this. This couch is great, and it's it, it's getting up there in price. It's like it? 130 bucks. What? Yeah. Whoa! I didn't know that. It's three and a white to return all enchantments from your graveyard to the battlefield. Right. Period. You want to get the angel down, which we can talk about how we do that later, because it's an eight mana bad creature. But once the angel's down, you just throw a replenish or a uh, retether out, and the game's basically over. Uh, nitpicking nerds, all star. Savage Reclamation. Definitely in the Hall of Fame. It's two and a white for a sorcery. Oh, wait. We don't read cards in the Hall of Fame. It'll be in the Hall of Fame after this. Two and a white for a sorcery. Return a permanent. Cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Flashback four and a white. If you flash it back, you copy it. So this can not only ramp you in the early game, or if it gets milled or something. Oh, great. I'll cast it. Get two auras back and help help out that. Yep. Uh, and another card. 
in than the Picking Your Tal of Fame. Sun Titan. Don't gotta read this one. This boy is good. It's is it the best Titan that was still legal? It's not my favorite, but it might be the best. I think it's it is. I mean it's not Grave or Frost. It's better than Inferno Titan. So that's it. Yeah, yeah. It's it is, so it is the best one legal. Yeah, it's not the coolest, but it is the best one. Yeah, very very good. Tons of utility. It's also a big creature if you want to suit that one up if you have a if you're on like plan D. Uh next from the library is another way that auras just have to enter. There's no targeting because you're not casting them. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have Wargate. It's like my favorite tutor. Uh, X and a Bant, so three mana and X. Sorcery, search for a permanent, and then put it on the battlefield. It has to have mana cost X. You can pay X is zero to get lands, but you probably do like X three or so to get uh, some crazy aura. Yeah, I mean, this is just a sweet little tutor to get permanents. That's all it is. I mean... You can get any permanent with this, and it can be a nice three mana ramp spell when you need it to be. But it's so versatile in that it can just go and then be. It could also be your Imperial Archangel. Yes, which we'll talk about later. Uh, how about this next one? Uh, it's Sovereigns of Lost Alara, four white blue for nobody cares about its stats, but it has Exalted, and whenever a creature you control attacks alone, search your library for an aura, put it onto the battlefield, attached to it. Right, an aura that that could enchant it. I think is what it says. Yeah. Sure. I, I mean, that makes sense. That makes sense to be worded that way, but I don't think I need to say that. Realistically, yeah. You're going to try to get your angel out and attack with it, and then once you get one of these key auras on the angel, you're really not able to die to most things, or at least damage-based things. It prevents all damage dealt to you. We'll, we'll get to that. The last way to cheat auras onto the angel, or anything really, is Brago, King Eternal. This was like, someone on Tapped Out recommended this like two years ago, and I just came around, I'm like, Oh, that's got to be crazy. You attack with Brago, flicker all your enchantments, just all of them. You get to move around your Utopia Sprawls and your Wild Growths onto other lands, basically create mana, all the enchantment ETVs, and then every aura goes into exile and then back into the battlefield. So there's no targeting, so you can put it on whatever you want. Yeah, and if you have Eidolon of Blossoms, oh, because this is an Enchantress deck. I will say, none of the, uh, the really good thing about this stuff is they have to, if your opponent wants to mess with you, they have to do it before. So the fact that the angel has shroud is really going to protect you from spot removal or anything. Let's say I have an enchantment that's going to, you know, break the game open in my graveyard and the angel in play. They have a doom blade. There's no point. Even if they have um, like a naturalize, it's going to be on the angel first. Mm -hmm. It cannot ever exist not on the angel. So if that's not what they want, they're in trouble. Yeah. It's just so good. It's just so stupid. And if like, let's I was say say good, but it's let's, not good. Let's say the angel dies. Um, the enchantment's still coming back. So if the target's not, there's no target. So if the creature you wanted isn't there, put it somewhere else. All right. So next, we're moving on to Voltron auras. With straight, like, these are the auras that are going to Voltron us up and keep us all high and mighty. Right. So basically, we can't. We're trying not to be able to lose. Just setting up this dumb pillow for it. <laughs> not be able to lose. Like, it stops everything. <laughs> I mean, there's spots where you can basically stop everything. But we have uh, Flicker Form is the first one. It's one and a white for an aura. You can pay... Two white, white, colon, to exile the enchanted creature and all auras attached to it, and they come back at the end step. So if you were going to face a board wipe or some mass enchantment removal, which is rare, you can go, all right, blink my team out, and they're coming back later. Yeah, usually it's a Heliad's intervention that gets you good. Ooh, well, yeah, that wasn't even around when I made this tech, but now that it is... Yeah, that card, that card's a, that card will get you. Like you know, Bane of Progress also. Bane of Progress. Oh, pff, and they get a huge beefy creature. Yeah, we got uh, we got plenty of answers to that that crap. Uh, what's next? Uh, Gift of Immortality. Um, this one's weird, right? I yeah, it's Tuna White for an enchantment aura. <laughs> Do we need to say that? It goes on the angel. It says whenever the creature dies, return it to the battlefield. And then at the end step, the aura comes back on it. So it, it'll be uh, immortal again. That is what I thought, but it was a weird... It's such a weird card. I wasn't... I didn't want to guess and be wrong on that one. Right, yeah. And then High Market is like a random land in the deck. That's actually pretty good. Um, High Market makes it so if your angel will get exiled or something, you can go, nope, put it in the graveyard instead. You're going to have to take some damage or figure out something there. And then it comes back at the end step. Yep. Um, what are these next two? I don't, I don't think I know... Shield of the Oversoul off the top of my head. You'll know it as soon as I start reading it. It's two and a green-white hybrid for an aura. If it's green, it gets plus one, plus one, and indestructible. Oh, I know it! And if it's white, <laughs> it gets plus one, plus one, and flying. So our creature is green and white, so it's going to be indestructible. The way indestructible uh, works with the angel is all damage dealt to you is dealt to it, and it can never die with damage. You can't you can't die damage. Yeah. Um, 
They're going to exile it like, and show you what's up. Right. They have to exile it, and now they have to, like, make you lose life or go in. Well, you can't really go infinite because some infinite things don't work. Like, I don't really care about – you can't Aetherflux reserv- reservoir me. I, I love the idea of, like, the angel blocking an Aetherflux reservoir shot for you. Over and over, infinite times. I, or just I got fl- it. Or even dying from it. It's even, like, more ridiculous. Aww. Like, it dives in front of, like, a giant laser, and, it's, and, it's, and it dies, and you're fine. But it was immortal, so it just comes back. <laughs> and then they came, he then came back. Yeah, and then Shielded by Faith is pretty sweet, because it does all the work for us. It's one white white for an aura. Enchanted creatures is indestructible. Whenever a creature enters under your control, you can just move Shielded by Faith to that creature. So we can just play this early, draw a card off our Enchantresses, which there's a ton of in the deck, or Tuvasa, and then play the Angel and go, oh, it's already indestructible. We're already halfway there. Can't be targeted, can't be destroyed. Do you have uh, Siona in the deck? One, you have a ton of enchantments just get with her, and then you could just have that combo in there with it. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to. I want the deck to actually rely on the, the Angel. Well, I mean, it's it's more of a, a backup plan. I think the backup plan is, is Tuvasa. She's actually just going to be huge. Uh, like I Originally, Rafik was the commander, but like, Tuvasa can just put out as much damage as him, mm-hmm. and it's an Enchantress. Uh, next, we have Spirit Mantle, which is one of the white... Uh, the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and... Wait. Protection from creatures. I knew that. So the, how, how does that actually work? Uh, well, creatures are the things dealing damage. So when they attack you, they go to deal damage to you, but then they try and deal damage to the angel, but they're creatures, so they can't. Right, it just prevents the damage. Also, makes the creature unblockable, so we don't have to worry about trample or anything, so our flyer is now just going to connect with whatever crazy stuff we set it up with. Yeah. Uh, next, unquestioned authority. Same thing, but it, it enters and draws a card. Spectre Ward gives it protection from all colors and plus two, plus two, but the protection doesn't remove auras. And the art's pretty on that one. The art is pretty. It's got a rainbow. It's really pretty. Okay, the whole deck is literally revolved around this one card, so we have to find it every game. Uh, so what if it what if it dies? What if it goes to the graveyard? What if you have to discard it? What if it gets milled? All highly likely. Oh, super possible because, one, it's going to have to rot in your head for eight years before you're able to play it. You don't really want to draw it. You want to try to find it. But if it does die, you got to turn a witness to get it back. And then new Zendikar card, Balgad Recovery, seems sweet in this deck. Balgad Recovery is absolutely stellar. A card I think we didn't give enough praise to at first. but and I we gave th- a lot of praise to it. <laughs> and we gave a lot of praise to it. But I think this is like one of the... It's. I think even though it enters tapped, when you're in 8-9 power level... This is still one of the better ones. It might be sixth best. It's it, it it might even sometimes be better than some of the mythics. Mm, I don't know. Depends. I it's think it's a, worse than them, but I think it's the best. It might be the best tapped one. Like because you don't get like this is the this effect is this effect slash mana cost is way better than all of those. And I and I understand the tap versus untapped. Yeah, but it's so it's it's so good. This can also get you back retethers and replenishes too. Yes. To go to go another round because they're sorceries, so they're going to go to the graveyard easily. Uh, so they actually get the card, the Ange- Imperial Archangel, from your deck to the battlefield. No questions. Quarter calling. X, green, green, green. Search for a creature. Cost X. Uh, put it into play. Instant speed and as Convoke, so all your tiny guys can tap for it. Yeah, I mean, that one's easy. That's Surprise. Just, that's just how you get it. Uh, pattern of <laughs> Rebirth is three and a green for an aura enchantment. Put it on a creature. When that creature dies, you search your library for a creature and you put it on the battlefield. I choose Imperial Archangel. Yes, you get another another awesome way to use High Market where it's like, all right, time to find it at instant speed. That's a cool, uh, you can instant speed stop a lethal combat or like an Aether Flux if it's not infinite. Hmm. Then she'll actually jump in front for you. Yeah, that's, so she's jumping out of your deck to do it. Oh, that's, what a loyal card. Wow. And then... You force her to do it, to be fair. Yeah, that's it's, true. It's, it's more of a, it's less of a selfless sacrifice and more of a, you held the angel in front of you to kill You her. took her out of your deck. <laughs> and she's like, all right, fine. You grabbed her and put her in front of the shot. <laughs> yeah. Last but maybe best is Natural Order. Two green green for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast it, sack a green creature. Search for a green creature. Just goes into play. Sack one of your stupid dorky uh, enchantresses or your commander, and you just get an archangel for four mana, which lets you double spell super easily. So you could go like natural order, um, replenish. Oops, your angel's like invincible. Yeah, and we, um, I mean, do I have to tell you why natural order is good? No. no. Wargate, we already talked about. This is the most innocent tech with natural order ever. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I usually when you natural or you just win. <laughs> right. This is like next turn I'm gonna hit you for lethal. Maybe. But I'm gonna also have to defend my my stack at least once. Maybe. Uh, last, <laughs> another Zendikar card, Turn Timber Symbiosis, which is another just, hey, it's not an enchantment, so it wouldn't make this deck, but it's a land. Took out a land for this card. Four green, green, green. 
Look at the top seven cards in your library. Put a creature from among them into play. If it's tiny, it gets three counters on it. Yeah, so we don't want it to be tiny. Right. This is like a, you got really nothing better to do. All right. Maybe you'll hit the angel. Maybe you won't. Yeah. But the cost is so low. Yeah. You almost always play it as a land, but sometimes you don't. Um, that's why I like Belly of Recovery so much. You get to play that one as a spell so often. Oh, it's love both of those cards. All right. So now we uh, omitted ways to actually, because the angel's going to attack for lethal. It is going to defend for lethal and attack for lethal. So we have to actually get it up to realistically 40. We're yeah. trying to go just one shot. Uh, so the easiest ways to do that are Ancestral Mask, creature gets plus two, plus two for each enchantment on the battlefield, not just under your control. Gets Obviously, it gets big fast. You only need... So it has five power. So right. you need... I don't want to do math. How many do I need? Well, it's a lot less when you... if you So you want to get Ancestral Mask out, but then you can clone it oh, okay. with, with three clones. So two of them, is, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. If you have anything, and you're just going to smash real hard. Uh, Thrill Armor is very similar. It gets first strike and plus one, plus one. So if you stack, you know... Ancestral Mask and the Armor Ancestral Mask. That's already 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 11. That's already 16. That's just those three cards. Yeah, and if you have anything else, it's lethal. And keep in mind, Replenish is one of the most frequent ways you're going to win. Everything that died when you got board wiped, you know, two turns ago, just comes back all in one turn, and there's probably nothing they can do about it. Yeah, and the next one is a big boy. Otherwise, it's Conscription. You, you put it on a creature, it gets Trample, it gets... Plus eight, plus eight, or plus ten, plus yeah, ten. Plus ten. Yeah, it's even, I'm sorry, my bad. Yeah. Plus ten, plus ten, and it has annihilator too. Just, just sprinkle on the annihilator. It, it's really devastating, and really good. Yeah, it is not not a bad magic card. Uh, I will add before we get to the last one. This deck has stubborn denial, arcane denial, and swan song as counter spells to protect from like the weird stuff that is going to get your angel no matter what. You can. There's not too many things once you start suiting it up that's going to get rid of it but when they come around or it's a spell that just kills you like expropriate you just counter it yeah and wait it's expropriate choose or target i think it's just choose i think that might actually <laughs> well that's what like that's the why i like flicker form where flicker form's like okay just get this thing I'll off give, the battlefield i don't want to have to give you an extra turn <laughs> i don't want you to have my angel <laughs> <laughs> i guess you can't kill me with your extra turn with combat so I'm sure the the expropriate deck was looking for the combat win. This is the this is the ultimate. If you're trying to meta game for your combat matters meta, they'll never beat you. This deck is unstoppable. This deck is like tuned to get this stupid thing out, make it indestructible, and if they like and it counters board wipes pretty well. So, well, what do you do? Die. <laughs> you lose. Uh, Die. And the last one I thought is awesome because why have just why limit yourself to just one angel? You play infinite reflection, which is five and a blue. For an enchantment aura, when it enters the battlefield, all your other non-tokens become the enchanted creature. Creatures you control enter, non-tokens, enter as the enchanted creature. So your whole team is now Archangels, which serves as an overrun, basically. You guys are really small. They're going to get like plus four, plus four-ish. And then they're all flying. I do have one question. Which one takes the damage? They all take the damage? I think it's uh, a bunch of replacements, so you get to choose. Okay, well, that's amazing. Yeah, it's like one, 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 one. Well, I don't think it's one, one, one. I think it's like three, two, six. Well, I'm saying for every one, you can just go, all right, this one, this one, this one, and then go back down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they just don't die. And if one of them is indestructible, it doesn't even matter. That's fair. Yeah, you can just do all the ones that. Yeah. But that's our video. Uh, special shout outs to all of our patrons. We love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. You guys are the lifeblood of this channel. Definitely. Not even close, baby. You guys help fuel all the videos fund the channel eventually this is going to be a full-time job that's basically inevitable help us get there faster when we get to 100 patrons bring it back the game show chance for glory oh which is super exciting we're gonna we're gonna go all out for that we're gonna try getting an editor and making it as good as we can yes new contestants well same old contestants new editor new like set i guess you could say Ooh, new set i guess you could say i guess you could say any other shout outs before the tidbit uh, what? Yeah. There's a TCG player link you can check out. Yeah, it's in the description below. Use that link. It really helps the channel. Um, you guys are crazy. Uh, for for <laughs> I always am surprised by the amount you guys have spent on there using our link, and we appreciate that. Yes, it's strictly upside for us, and we really appreciate when you actually use it, because if you're going to do it anyway, hey, you know, throw out some support to one of your favorite creators. Uh, go another, what I was going to say, go to... Go whoever, find Gavin Verhey and tell him we want a preview card. We're sick of not having one. <laughs> the best uh, currency is somehow get the message to wizards that we are humans who inhabit the planet. 
Yeah. Uh, and then we have a YouTube channel. Let's just make it Gavin Vary. Get Everybody attack him. Get him, whoa. guys. Whoa, you know whoa, what whoa. I mean. What you is this? You know what I mean. What is this? The, Disclaimer. Uh, guys, save me. The Nipping Nerds don't endorse any violence against any Wizards employees at all. I'm so glad he's on call. Yeah. I mean, do, do I really Ooh. do I really need that? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. But just get Wizards or something. Hashtag notice the nerds was the hashtag a while ago. Use that. Use that. At Gavin Verhey. We just need them to know we exist. I actually just don't need anything from them ex other than to acknowledge like the scent, like Wizards tweets. We acknowledge that the nitpicking nerds exist. Like that would be it for me. <laughs> I would be like, we, we did it. We, we did it. We acknowledge that we don't want to give them a preview. <laughs> That's fine too. I'll also take that. But we're definitely rambling. But we have to talk about the tidbit that I said earlier, which was what? We were playing. I was playing on spell table earlier, which was super Fun. I got to pop off, and I didn't, I didn't tell you why yet, so this is a story for you. I lost the game, but um, I had a fetch line in play. Um, Omnath, three-color Omnath, who can draw basically when a land enters, and I was dead on board to a Beastmaster Ascension and, like, 50 snakes. Okay. Uh, well, not that many. So it was probably, like, it was actually 14 snakes. 100,000 snakes. Four, 14 snakes attacking me, and Beastmaster Ascension, they all have plus five, plus five. Okay. So I'm like, all right. This wasn't even on your turn? Yeah, no, it wasn't. Okay. I I fetch, and I'm like, and I shock myself. And I'm like, all right, I have a one outer. If the top card of my deck is Nature's Claim, I live. If not, I don't. And I flipped. I didn't even look. I flipped it, and it was Nature's Claim. Oh, <laughs> that, that I, feels good. I died the ne very next turn. Doesn't matter. To Voltron up uh, a Dorn Pouncer. Imperial Archangel, gotcha. <laughs> a Dorn Pouncer killed me. You know, you would totally be fine against those snakes if you had an indestructible 5-8 with Shroud. I'm pretty sure that I got, like... 30 or 40 by that adored pouncer. It came out turn two in a Rabo deck. Oh, it was just, it was just hitting. That hits for eight Absolute, without any additional. Absolutely destroying me. Yeah, that's got to be one of the best cards in that deck. Um, that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know other janky enchantments I could potentially put on the Imperial Archangel. Always looking for advice because I love, I love playing this deck. It's so silly. I get really happy when I play it. And we're on the way out. Peace out, Tribe Scout.